how is everybody today? I am Kimba Garcia and I'm here with one of my awesome friends. I'm actually going to let you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your history and kind of the backstory on like what led you to where you are today and then we're we're going to get into it. Okay so uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to be talking for a little while but um, yeah so my name is Shamil Gary uh, for the people that don't know who I am. Um, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, born and raised. Um, I went to the best high school in the entire United States, Booker T. Washington. Uh, from there, I, I was able to earn a, a Division One scholarship to the University of Wyoming. When uh, after two years, I transferred. I decided to transfer just for the reason. Uh, my grandma uh, I wanted to be close to my family. My grandma had Alzheimer's, uh, as well as. Um, I didn't have any emotional control. So for being honest, I had to make a move. And so then I went to Oklahoma State. I walked on, uh, I got a scholarship. I started two years there. Uh, then I went to the NFL. I played four years for the, um, the Dolphins, Patriots, Bills, and the Vikings for a week. I really don't count the Vikings. You know what I mean? You can't count someone yeah. you play for for a week. Um, but that's what I call it, the, you know, the not for long league. So um, I got a concussion. My I've never fourth heard year. I've never you never heard, heard that? that <laughs> no. Oh yeah, the not for long league. You know, the average career of an NFL player is like two and a half years. So, um, you know, uh, you got injuries. It's a cutthroat business. You know, I seen people. Uh, I had a locker where someone basically they would bring someone in, they would cut them the next week. They would bring someone in, they would cut them the next week. It's a cutthroat business, and people mm -hmm. think, you know, it's a luxurious life, but it's very stressful at the same time. So you have to learn how to have thick skin, uh, be resilient, be persistent, um, because it's a lot of rejection throughout, you know, those years. Um, so after I got a concussion, my last year decided to, you know, call it a career. And um, shoot, one day I was trying to, I'll come back to that. But uh, I was trying to figure out what was next in my, yeah. my career. And uh, I, was, I took my daughter to school. I was eating Fruity Pebbles. And uh, I was like, man, I should go into motivational speaking. Oh my gosh. Here we go. go. Dif difficulties. You know what's funny though, is whenever I was on your podcast, remember right at the end, mine died? Like. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's what happens when you, you know, you gotta charge up your stuff. <laughs> Lesson one. I know I did I did that same thing. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is adversity though. Adversity right here. Okay. Now we're back in action. And a quick solution. That was so fast. Um yeah, but I, I really like that because I, I want to just kind of go back to one little thing that you said about the NFL. Because I'll be honest with you, I've never considered what that business probably looks or feels like internally until you and I got connected and kind of started becoming friends and you started sharing with me some of your stories about the stress and the thick skin required there. And I think that that's what you've really been able, it was really those skill sets that you learned in the NFL that have been able to take you to this next step in the career because you're able to share with other people the four M's that we're gonna talk about, right? Yeah. And those were skills that were required to just like survive in the locker room right, in right. the NFL. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of got to that place. So uh, I, I was going to talk about it, but, you know, I, why not talk about it right now? So We're free flowing. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I drove like 19 hours from Buffalo, New York, back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I did what any normal person would do. I uh, went straight to the car wash and I began to clean out my, my car. And so I was washed <laughs> it. Um, I was scrubbing and all that good stuff. But when it came to time to, to clean out my trunk, I uh, got lazy and I started to lift up the bags and try to clean under it. And like, I felt like I heard God's voice and God was like, Shamil, this is what you're doing in your life. You're holding on to the baggage that I'm trying to get you to let go of. And so, yeah, so I went on this journey of trying to clean out my trunk and become uh, more aware of who I am and what's holding me back and, and what I need to let go of. And so that's how I began to figure out, okay, what makes people elite performers? And then I came up with these four M's, you know, they have uh, a mission. Um, their mindset is, is, is the, is correct. Uh, they they're constantly trying to master their skills and maintenance. 
they take care of themselves, you know, and a lot of times uh, we uh, forget about the, the last part, the maintenance part, as far as taking care of ourselves. So that's kind of how I got there, though. Yeah. I love it. And so you actually have a podcast, though, where you bring people on yeah. of different walks of life and you interview them on these four M's. So let's just plug people into your podcast real quick. I want to make sure we kind of get that at the front of this video because y'all have got to go subscribe to his podcast he's putting out just epic content to keep these four m's in line and i mean how often do you release a new video it seems like pretty regularly you're doing it so tell them how to find your podcast real quick yeah so um you can listen to my podcast on uh, apple uh spotify and google or you can go to youtube and watch the the video but um it's called game time excellence podcast uh just game time uh, G-A-M-E, time, T-I-M-E, <laughs> and then uh, Excellence uh, Podcast. And then you can go to YouTube. Uh, my YouTube is Shamil Speaks. Um, and that's where I post like different content as well. I've been on this kick of uh, posting like visuals and recording my voiceover. Way. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, so no, that's kind of what I've been really on. cool. Those have been really cool. And he actually sends them to me sometimes in Messenger. And I love that. No, I, I, don't I send them all the time, every time, every time. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it because it, that's one of the beautiful things about having you as a friend. Like one time he just called me to be like, have a great day. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. just like, you know, so it, it's so awesome. I love how you just put that out to the universe and other people and make sure that you're constantly picking everybody else up, which is what led you to the next chapter, right? That really is who you are. Right. You really are somebody that's making sure that the whole team is winning. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's that's one of my favorite things about you. So let's talk a little bit real quick about kind of what you're doing now. Like you you were in a place where you needed to clean out the trunk. It was mm -hmm. like, what was the next step? So what was that? Like, let everybody know where you are now and what you're doing now and a little about your missions, not first. So maybe we shouldn't start there. Yeah, so missions first, missions first. So, uh, oh my God, I keep messing it up. Yeah. So <laughs> so I had to figure out my mission. Um, and so it's kind of crazy how things align and connect. So earlier that year, before I stopped playing football, I gave 30 speeches in a month. And I just wanted to give back. I didn't get paid for any one of those speeches. I did it for free. Uh, and as I was uh, eating Fruity Pebbles, you know, it just to just drop my daughter off, I was watching Paw Patrol. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to change the channel. Paw Patrol is actually, you know, it's actually pretty good. But um, I was like, man, what am I going to do next? And I was like, what am I passionate about? What do I love? And I started to ask myself some of these questions, you know, and, and a lot of times when you're trying to get to and figure out your mission, you just need to like, dive within because all the answers are inside. And so I just yeah. began to answer. I began to ask myself questions like, what do I love? What am I passionate about? Um, how do I want to be remembered at the end of my life? And um, I was like, man, I want to make an impact. I want to help people. Uh, reach their dreams, their goals. I want to help them uh, uh, achieve a better mindset, achieve inner excellence. And so I was like, man, let me do motivational speaking. I did it earlier this year. I really enjoyed it. It gave me that fulfillment and I could see myself doing it for a very long time. So I went into motivational speaking. I spoke to the youth. Uh, I speak to uh, different organizations, nonprofits, and I speak at corporations. Uh, but currently, um, I still do that, but currently what I do now is I help individuals achieve inner excellence uh, through mental training. And so I do that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, I have a morning call that I do as well, and I do corporate training. So, hey, if, you, if you're looking to achieve inner excellence, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I do group training. And, uh, you know, if you have a, a corporate group, I, I do that as well. So that's kind of what, where my mission is, is headed right now. I love it. And these, the morning calls that you started doing, you kicked those off a couple months ago, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and so how's that going? I was going good. It's going good. It's a, it's a, um, a small knit group, which that's how I want it. Um, everyone's vulnerable. Uh, every, you can see growth. Everyone is uh, achieving a level of self-awareness where they can, um, you know, they go through the day and they're like, man, I'm, I'm at a, like a three right now. I need a, what can I change right now to get to a five, get to a six, get to a seven. And so uh, one of the things we do every Monday, which I encourage everyone to do is check in with your five F's. Um, so your family, where are you at from one to 10 with your family? One being 
the worst, 10 being the best it could be, you know? And then if it's a five, what can you do to, to get it to a six or a seven, you know? And then, so you have your family, you have faith, you have finance, uh, you have fitness. So physical fitness and mental fitness. And then you have your career field, your field. And so if one of those Fs is messed up, then your whole life is effed up. So that's kind of what yeah, I'm saying. I love right that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you added that to the end. Yeah. So, so Shamil, how do you, like, you're coaching these other people in mindset, achieving that inner excellence? Like, how mm -hmm. do you personally keep yourself? Because when you're leading other people to have inner excellence, you have to really be tapped into your own mindset, your right. own inner excellence, to be able to lead that forefront every day. So, what is your strategy personally for like being able to stay at a ten in mm -hmm. your own mindset? Right. Right. So. Um, one, I do self-reflection and um, let's, let me let me start over. So one of the things I try to do every week, uh, and I say try because um, um, I, I, I may miss one week, but I try to do it like at least three times out of a month where every Sunday I check in with myself on how the week went. So what did I do good? What did I do bad? How was my emotions? Was I, was I stressed? Was I anxious? Was I confident? And I give myself three goals going into the next week. And a lot of times, uh, most people, uh, we check in with ourselves one time. And that's when we're creating New Year's resolutions. And like, right. and so I think about my, myself like a, like a car. Um, you, wouldn't give, you wouldn't get an oil change once a year because, I mean, if you did, your car probably break down. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. um, that's kind of what I do right there. So that's one thing I do. And then... I practice like self-reflection, you know, I walk and I ask myself questions, man, like, um, what's my why and how do I want to be remembered? And I ask myself that, okay, so do my words align with my actions? Wow. A lot of times we say like good stuff, you know what I'm saying? We say like all the cliche things, you know, um, uh, be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, you only do two things in life. You either win or you learn, but you <laughs> actually believe that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, um, I check in with myself and then one thing I think everyone should do is visualize I visualize I close my I'm doing it right now I close my eyes and I <laughs> I see um what I want I create new emotions I celebrate myself I think about what I'm grateful for um I I, I see myself walking around with good energy confidence all that right there and then I slow my breathing down and, and I, those are the things I do to practice uh, keeping myself uh, one with my with my maintenance and keeping myself uh, my mindset right. So and those those things are so powerful too because whenever we can visualize and we can have those conversations with ourselves, we can we start to align our actions closer with that mm -hmm. in in our day to day journey, and then that leads us to our next M. Right? right. It's like mm -hmm. it's all those things that then lead you to mastery. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent. And. Um, you know, that's why it's so good to, you know, reflect and, and, and not just wait once a year to check in with yourself because we yeah. all have goals. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations, but you know, if you only do it one time a year, I mean, life happens, you know, like you're getting pulled from many different directions, uh, stress, anxiousness, family, money, whatever, shoot COVID, you know, uh, you got, you, you got race issues, you know what I mean? All types of stuff <laughs> happening in the world. Social media yeah. is, is dividing all that type of stuff. And you have to check in with yourself to be like, okay, am I really doing the things necessary to get better, to grow, to achieve whatever goal I have for myself, you know? And, um, and that's what I try to do every week to master these skills. And, um, and one of the ways I try to master my skills too, is well, I have this thing called like the, the, the fear challenge. And so uh, I write down all my fears um, mm -hmm. and I try to tackle a fear, you know, once a week. Um, so I, I what yeah. are they on that list because I'm about to make my list and it's about to be sounding like skydiving and you're going to have to come push me out the plane oh shoot we should we should <laughs> go do it New January 1st let's go skydiving let's make it happen no I don't agree <laughs> I don't agree <laughs> <laughs> that's funny no mastery. I need to work on it more no you um, got it so so mastery what is what does that one look like what does that one look like to you how do, how do you go about that in mm -hmm. um so what do i what, what i try to do is i'm trying to uh i'm very intentional so i kind of take myself back to when i was a football player and so before every practice i would have a sticky note 
and I would have intentional goals. You know, a lot of times we have these big goals, but I have like intentional goals as far as like, um, I want to focus on my eyes today. So I don't care if I get, I don't care if I mess up on tackling or anything else, but I just want to focus on man to man coverage and focus on my eyes. And so that's kind of what I do with myself each day. I have one intentional goal that I try to focus on, whether it be, um, say I'm trying to get better with my video recording and or with the way I interact with the camera. Okay. So I am, I'm very intentional. So I say to myself, I put on a sticky note, um, relax, just breathe and just do one take, you know, and, and that's how, right. and, and, it, and it, it causes me like to not to put, to put too much pressure on myself. So I, mm-hmm. I, I have like intentional goals. That's kind of what I do right there to help with the mastery. That's really so many people struggle with video and you just kind of added in a little additional secret sauce there on people that are trying to get better with video mm-hmm. because that's exactly right. Like you start stressing yourself out and then, oh, yeah. and then you can't just flow with it. Mm-hmm. All right, Shamil. So our last M is maintenance. Yes. And I really enjoyed this topic that we got into on your podcast because we kind of even talked about like specifically women that mm-hmm. that struggle with this here in that conversation. And um, I do myself as a woman, I do prioritize my own maintenance, but I do see a lot of women around me that still, and this is what I said, and you were, you were almost like shocked when I said it, you're like, wow. Um, but a lot of women actually feel selfish. Yeah, they feel selfish, and a lot of men might as well. But I think it's kind of like that—the mother-wife thing, you know, right, where you're right. just always trying to take care of everybody else around you. But I think that we see business owners, CEOs, and people of different walks of life that do that too, because you're always, as a good leader, you're always taking care of the team. Right, right. And and so it's hard to just let your own maintenance kind of go on the back burner but it's so important because mm-hmm. what people don't understand is if you're not maintaining yourself you can't lead the right. team to a victory and mm-hmm. so what are some ways that you make sure that you know you keep up with your maintenance yeah so um you know kind of the same things you know when I find myself getting stressed uh I like to tra- I, like, I like to change my 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 state so I get moving I, I walk um as soon as I feel anxious or stressed out I just go I just walk it doesn't have to be like a long walk it's like a two minute three minute walk and I start digging in my success box um and my your success box is whatever you have overcame uh your achievements all those things right there and I start to say you know I love it yeah you know there's a lot of times we forget like who we are and you got to remember like who you are and so um I remind myself like Shamil like come on now you made it to the NFL Shamil you dealt with rejection Shamil I mean your mom passed away and you're still living like come on like remind yourself who you are and then um as far as like you know self-care I I I work out I um go get pedicures I get manicures you know um and then I also go see a counselor too so that's that's uh I mean I I think everyone deserves it's it's there's a bad stigma on counseling Everyone deserves to go to counseling. It's, it's your right. It's, you need it. Everyone needs that one person who's going to be like, man, I hear you. And they don't have any dog in the fight. You know, a lot yeah. of times when you talk to your friend, they want to they want to give you advice. I'm Dude, I'm oh, not yeah. listening. I, I don't want advice. I just want you to listen to me. You know? Yeah. So, How often do you do that? Uh, once a month. I go to counseling once a month. Yeah. Nice. Uh-huh. I've been, um, so I, d- I did that too. I've, I've been to counseling too. And I say, I'm not active in it once a month right now, but I say the same thing. I'm like, this really has a bad stigma against it. This is very healthy because we all acquire things throughout our journey that we have to unpack. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's where counseling can really play. And it doesn't have to be because anything's wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just because it's maintenance. Exactly. Right? It's, yeah. it's maintenance on the things that we're continuing to add up. Um, one more thing, Shamil, because this is also something really cool that you did, you do that we haven't talked about yet. So you've been, obviously, you've been hyper-inspired by becoming a father. That mm-hmm. was obviously one of the defining moments in your life. And yes. it's really cool because you've taken that and um, you've actually written a children's book. Mm-hmm. And you have a children's book out on the market. So I want to talk a little bit about how that kind of came about and... Um, you know, just tell people a little bit about your book that you have out. Cause it's, you know, you see people write books, but you chose to go with a children's book. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, I was just looking at my daughter and I was like, man, I want to, I want to leave something 
that because you look at movie stars or you look at authors when they die they have a catalog of stuff that their children can like look back at and be like that was my dad and so yeah. um you know uh, it was kind of inspired by two parts so my mom passed away and me thinking I, I couldn't I can't find any voice recordings I can't uh I don't have too many pictures and I'm like man I don't want that so it goes back to like, how do I want to be remembered? Like, I want my daughter to remember me. And so I want to create as many things as possible so she can remember me one. And that that inspires her to do um, even more than what I did. And so yeah. uh, um, the, it's a two story book about one, loving yourself, which, you know, I believe that's important. And then two, mm -hmm. uh, being confident. Um, and those are two of the things I try to instill in her every single day you know we look ourselves in the mirror and we 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 say our little affirmations and then um um i'm always challenging her to attack her fears too as well because once you attack the fears you, re you realize like i can do anything and so i want that to be in her life and so i didn't have that like in high school no confidence college no confidence and i started to build it towards my senior year towards the nfl and i'm yeah. building even more now and so I, I just you know confidence is important I think that would be something that people are kind of surprised to hear about you, that there was a time in your journey when you weren't a confident person because you do really have an energy of confidence about you now that's inspiring to people. And so it's cool for you to be that vulnerable and transparent to say, like, I haven't always, I haven't always had that. And, and right. it makes it more attainable to people that might be feeling that right now as well. So thank you so much for taking oh, yeah. some time today, Shamil, and coming on here. Um, I'm going to, in the comments, I'm going to share a link to your podcast. Y'all go over there and subscribe to his podcast so you get notifications when he drops new things. The YouTube is awesome, too. The new voiceover style videos have been really yeah. cool. I've been enjoying seeing those pop up. So you guys head over to his podcast. And I hope that y'all got something today uh, from Shamil's journey. I know that I do every single time I talk to the dude. So that's why I wanted you to come on here with me today to be able to bring some of these nuggets to the the networking lounge here mm -hmm. um you know you have a very tactical way of the way that you go about your you know you don't just wake up in the morning and wing it you have a very tactical way and um that you go about maintaining your success and mastery mm -hmm. and so i appreciate you coming on and and sharing those things with us today and everybody else have a fantastic friday we'll talk to y'all soon all right thank you so much have a great day